Welcome back to the highlights from the first day of the World Rapid Championship. And we're choosing one game uh, that caught our eye uh, 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 in, a, in a special way. And for today, there was no doubt about our selection whatsoever. It was a thrilling fourth round game between Anastasia Bodnaruk and Alexandra Goryachkina. And uh, it started out as a Spanish opening uh, where uh, Goryachkina chose to use the Berlin defense, very popular among the top players these days. Uh, but uh, Bodnaruk, she just chose to calmly move her pawns forward, controlling the center of the board. And then early on, she moved her bishop out to point it down towards the black knight and towards the black queen. Now, this is important because this bishop played a key role in what made this game so exciting. Uh, Black just continued uh, developing, getting the pawn forward so that you can get your bishop out afterwards. Uh, the knight came out, uh, the pawn challenged the bishop, the bishop just uh, took a step back, and then the bishop positioned itself towards the black king. Now, little did Goryachkina know, but this was a very ominous um, tell of, of what was to come. Um, after trying to trade off that annoying white bishop, uh, Bodnaruk chose to go into the middle of the board, uh, saying that we're uh, happy to make a trade, but we're going to make the trade on my, uh, the way I want to do it. The trade happened. Uh, the knight was attacked, forced back, but as a result of this trade, white was able to uh, open up the square e4 uh, to get the knight forward there. And this is when it all started out, because it seemed as though um, Goryachkina had everything figured out with one knight protecting the other knight, and now she tried to push away the white bishop so that there was no longer a bishop pointing down towards Black's queen. But uh, Bodnaruk, she wasn't having any of it, was she, Irina? Yeah, so this was um, a moment where Bodnaruk plays a very thematic idea using the fact that she's not castled, her rook is still on h1, and a rook like that can often be used in the attack um, if the h file opens. So she just plays h4, supporting her bishop, and basically, you know, provoking Black to take it. Now, I think with hindsight, um, it was probably not a good idea to take that bishop. And Black was certainly not forced to take it. They could have played a move like Rook E8. Um, nothing was actually being threatened uh, at the moment. But Gediachkin decided to play the principled pawn takes bishop. And this decision was very dangerous. It led to the opening of the H file. Now the queen wants to come out to h5, and actually if the knight takes the knight on e4, we are just going to bring in our queen. We're not even going to recapture. And actually what happened is that Goryachkina chose to move her pawn one step forward, basically just making sure that white's queen was unable to join the attack. However, uh... <laughs> Bodnaruk, she didn't even capture this knight. She could have captured yeah. the knight, but but then, you know, Black would have gotten the king forward and maybe the rook over to the side. Uh, maybe she would have gotten away with it then. Goryachkina just said, no, I don't care about your knight. My pawn is more valuable to this attack. And she just moved her queen forward uh, to let the queen join the attacking force. Yeah, this was really a stunning decision, actually, because she just had a chance to win back the knight with, you know, seemingly the same features of the attack. I mean, the open H file, the knight on E4, and the queen coming in. She chose not to do it um, as if the knight was just completely unimportant, and she managed to make it work anyway. The knight moved away, but uh, even though she tried to block the rook uh, on the H file, she wasn't successful in that because the rook just captured the knight anyway. And, and if black were to capture back, the queen would come up and it would actually be a devastating attack. Despite black being a, a rook up, there's no defense to just white getting the, the king up 
and then the rook over to the other side, having the, the queen and rook working together to give a checkmate. Uh, so uh, instead, um, uh, Goryachkina, she tried to uh, basically just make it as complicated as possible. Yeah, she, I mean, she played f5, trying to link up her pieces with the king side. Unfortunately, though, she's not actually up material here. And with this move, rook h6, just a simple rook move, white escapes with the rook. The knight is untouchable because there's too many threats to the black king. Black's got to protect that g6 pawn. And then white was having this nice attacking position without having actually sacrificed any material for it. But I, I wouldn't say it was over just yet uh, because the king managed to come out protecting the pawn. And even though, you know, Goryachkina has something going on here, it's actually equal material. So if she doesn't kind of continue her attack, she, she's not going, uh, she, she's not going to win just by doing nothing. She, she doesn't even have a material advantage. So she decided to just, to just get more pieces into the attack and she castled. Uh, and she just said, let's get more pieces over to the right side of the board uh, and just keep hammering at this uh, black king. And you got a chance go to make to get that pun in today. The hammering, I did. yeah, that's good. I caught that. Um, yeah, no, it seemed to me like like she was just determined not to move this knight from e4. And it's kind of a beautiful thing when a piece stays on the board on a square when it's actually getting attacked and it just refuses to move. And white is proceeding to involve all of their pieces in the attack. Yeah, because here the, the next rook came as well. And the white knight was intending to move forward into the heart of black's position. Goryashkina felt forced to make the trade of rooks. But now, in addition to facing all the other threats, there's a pawn almost becoming a new queen. Now, actually, I wasn't sure about this decision uh, because when the king retreated to the corner, we could see that the black queen was actually ready to start capturing white pawns. But uh, Budnarok, she, she just realized that, yes, I can lose a pawn in the middle. I can even lose a pawn uh, close to my own king. I can just give away those guys because I'm just completely focused on the other side of the board with uh, White's queen infiltrating, trying to eliminate that very important pawn being one of the last guardians of uh, Black's king. Yeah, that, that knight on g5. It's such a lovely piece, the way he controls those squares around the king, not allowing the queen to come back to the defense. And really, you know, this game is won by that beautiful knight. And of course, you know, the queen entering the attack. And uh, Goryachkina, she actually took a third pawn in a row um, with uh, the bishop coming to, to capture the white pawn. She's one move away from saving herself. If black was able to move the bishop back uh, next move, that bishop would both attack towards the white king, but maybe even more importantly, try to trade away some of these white attacking pieces. But it wasn't meant to be. The queen came in uh, just in time to threaten uh, a knight coming in for the final checkmating blow. Uh, the rook tried to salvage the situation uh, at the very last moment, uh, but after um, knight to e6, there was uh, a checkmating threat with the queen coming in to g7 instead. And yes, there was a check on the white king. The king moved up. There was another check on the king, but the king uh, moved away. Um, actually here, Goryachkina, she was pretty close to saving herself uh, because she managed to get a situation where she could get the trade of queens. The problem is, that instead of trading queens, Budnarok, she took the rook while simultaneously also protecting her queen. It's like everything worked for her in this game. And uh, this caused a resignation from Goryashkina, who realized that if she were to capture back this uh, knight, the queen would come in with a check, forcing the black queen to block. But then when trading in a, on a more favorable square, it opens up for white to get a new queen protected by this rook. 
and yeah it was just an amazing game to witness yeah no i loved it and it's always so nice when we see some upsets we um you know gariashkin is the top seed in the women's section rated over 2600 and she was playing really confidently up to that point but the day ended with a bang for anastasia budnaruk and hopefully you guys will uh remember her name this was the rapid recap of the um, uh, world rapid championship uh, day one uh, and uh, this recap will be found on the chess.com youtube uh, channel uh, which you all should subscribe to uh, for content like this and uh, similar Thank you.